Good Tuesday morning. How are you feeling today? It's cold, it's snowy. <coughs> Good morning, Lori. <coughs> I overslept a little bit today. Good morning, Lori. Hope you are both off to a good day. Good morning to you, Roseanne. It was nice to see you yesterday walking the building. Um, I want to encourage you if you have, <coughs> excuse me, I want to encourage you if you have things that you would like for us to be praying about, um, just put them in the notes down in the down in the bottom, and we'll do that with you and do that for you. Um, Lori, I know you did that last week with your with your Uncle Don, I believe it was. <clears throat> um, so, please, uh, please let us know how we can pray with you. Uh, good morning, Carol. Yes, someone does need to turn the heat up outside. But we have been, we have been immeasurably, I don't know, Blessed. I'm great. So how about this? I'm grateful for the moderate winter that we have had so far. Um, but I do like I do like the cold weather as well. I'm looking forward to going out for a run in the snow here in a little bit because that is um, I love running in the rain, which is very rare here in western Nebraska. I think I've only I think I've only run in the rain since we've lived here in the almost four years now that we've lived here. I think I've only run in the rain maybe maybe a handful of times. <clears throat> so when I get to run in the snow, I like that. I like the snow crunching under my feet. I like the feeling of it. I like the sound of it. Um, so I'm actually excited to go and run in the snow in a few minutes. Um, after we have our time together today, we're only going to read a few verses, actually just two, um, because the next section of Mark 14 is um, is about the Lord's Supper, and that's actually what we're talking about on Sunday during our 10:15 time. So I need to think a little bit more um, tomorrow when I read that. I need to think a little bit more about how we're going to talk about it because I don't want to just give you my sermon for for Sunday. <clears throat> But, um, so yeah, so today we're just going to read a few verses. Uh, if you have your Bible, I would encourage you to open it to Mark uh, chapter 14. Um, we're just going to read verses 10 and 11 and have a little brief conversation about that. Um, and then close out our, close out our time together. Um, I hope you are, um, having, a, an enjoyable break. I know. Um, I mean, I know that I'm still I'm still working. Um, our hours are a little different um, on a week like this. <clears throat> uh, Joe's out of town visiting family. Jim's out of town visiting family. Um, there's not a lot going on in the office, so um, so. We just, our hours are a little different in the building, or not in the building, in fact, um, which is kind of nice. This is one of those times where it's really nice to um, to work at, um, at a church, um, <clears throat> to be able to um, just have some flexibility in our time. So I'm, I'm really grateful and I'm really thankful um, for the ability to do that. We have our, we have our, uh, daughter-in-law Brianna here this week. She's married to our son Nathan and Nathan is at um, is at basic training, um, Air Force basic training at, at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. So she is um, she's actually staying with friends for a few months in Colorado Springs. So she's here this week and they brought their granddaughter or she brought her their grand our granddaughter um, their daughter Olivia. <clears throat> so that's been kind of fun being able to spend time with them so we've enjoyed that um so it's just a little different week for us and i'm thankful for i'm thankful for that i'm thankful that westway allows us to have a little um a little bit of an off week as we finish out the year and get ready for get ready for next year um 
So Deanna's joined us. Thanks for joining today, Deanna. Thanks, Scott. Um, today we're going to read Mark 14, uh, verses 10 to 11. And again, if you have prayer requests, put them in the notes so we can pray with you. Um, please, we like to do that. Um, so this is, again, like we have been several, um, ever since chapter 11. So going back a few weeks for us, we have been, we have been in that last week of Jesus' life. Um, as we talked yesterday, Jesus was, um, Jesus was anointed at Bethany. He had the woman break the jar of expensive perfume um, open and pour the perfume on his head. And um, like to honor him and to prepare him for his burial. Um, whether she knew she was doing that or not, she was just there to worship and praise him. Um, and then when people complained about what she was doing, he said, um, he said, well, this is what, um, you know, this is what she's doing. Don't criticize her for doing this good thing. Um, so, um, so we're going to see the opposite. We're going to see someone who kind of does the opposite of that today. So Tony, thank you for playing in the snow at the building today. We greatly appreciate it. I know I'm going to be thankful when I get over there, um, here in a little bit that there's no snow. So thanks for doing that for us. Um, so, Mark, 10, Mark 14, chapter 10. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests to arrange to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come, and they promised to give him money. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. So this is when, you know, this is when it's really great for us to, um, to be able to read the um, multiple sections of the Bible at the same time and read them individually as well and be able to to look at comparisons and contrasts um, one of the things that we have talked about throughout um, throughout the book of Mark is this entire book deals with the concept of the identity of Jesus so who is Jesus Jesus asked that question who did the people say that I am um, how do the people respond to the identity of Jesus? How do people respond to who Jesus is? Um, and that's kind of one of the things. That's one of the things that we see here in these two scenes, in the one we read yesterday, um, and the one we're reading today. Um, Jesus is, um, according to the you know the woman who broke the perfume and poured the perfume on his head, Jesus was someone who was. Um, who was to be lit, uh, lifted up. Jesus was someone who was to be worshipped, someone who was to be praised, um, someone who um, was worthy of, um, who was, let me think of how to say this, who was worthy of the cost of an expensive jar of perfume to be wasted. And I'm not saying it was wasted, but she, there was something there was something about Jesus that she that she valued more than this expensive jar of perfume. Now we have these two verses where Judas is contrasted to that. To where the value that Jesus had was what he could get for Jesus. Does it make sense? Um, now, it says they promised to give him money. I mean, we know, we know like the rest of the story, so we can read through the Gospels, and we can see that Jesus's life for um, to Judas was basically worth was basically thirty pieces of silver. That was the value of Jesus's life. And I, th I think it's I think it's safe to say that Jesus's life um, in both of these in both of these scenes, Jesus's life was worth something. And the question the question is is does Jesus's life have value? For me to give up something, 
or does Jesus's life have value for me to get something? So for, so for the woman, Jesus's life had enough value that she would give up um, like everything she had um, to gain something from him. So it says it could have been sold for a year's wages. So imagine whatever it is that you whatever it is that you make in a year, um, imagine sacrificing that for Jesus, giving up everything for Jesus. I think we sort of had a had a had a picture of that several weeks ago when we were reading, when we were reading about Jesus sitting outside the temple. And the and they were watching people give. Do you remember that? They were watching people give. The wealthy people gave gave from their um, gave a little from their excess is the way that Jesus described it. But the poor woman gave all that she had. I think in the scene that we talked about yesterday, we had an image of this woman giving up everything she had in order to honor Jesus. And in the scene that we're talking about today with Judas, Jesus's life has value just in like in the same way, like Jesus's life has value, but only for what he could get out of it. And I think that, I think that some of us, um, some of us are tempted to only see Jesus for what he can give us. And the woman yesterday saw Jesus for what she could give him. But Judas's, Jesus's life for Judas only had value in what he could receive. So it was sort of like Jesus had, <clears throat> Jesus had, had, um, had given Judas all he was going to, and now Judas was going to cash in on that. This was an opportunity for Judas to take something from Jesus and I would say I would say for us um, the question ultimately is what do we value Jesus for do we value Jesus for who he is um, and we'll get when we saw this theme as well we've seen this theme throughout the book of Mark do we value Jesus for what he is or for what he can give us and when it I think when it became clear that what Jesus was ultimately going to give the disciples was was pain and suffering and hardship because of their relationship with him that wasn't something that Judas wanted and maybe I'm reading more into this maybe I'm not being fair to Judas but the reality of it is, is that Judas betrayed Jesus. And he did it for money. He did it for selfish, he did it for selfish gain. And yesterday we have this example of this woman who has given everything that she had in the form of this expensive perfume. She had given everything she had for Jesus versus continuing to demand that Jesus give her something. And for me today, as I, as I kind of ponder this story and as I'm going to think about it throughout the rest of the day, um, I think it's just a good question to ask, like, what, why am I in this relationship with God? Is, this, is, is, is my relationship with God an opportunity for me to sacrifice and give of myself? Or is my relationship with God an opportunity for me to get something and take something from him? Obviously, I get salvation from him. I want to be thankful for that. I want you to be thankful for that. Jesus has a lot to offer. He has, that's a minimal, that's, that's a minimization, minimalization. Like Jesus has everything to offer us. Jesus gives us eternal life. And I and I think that as Christians, 
we ought to find satisfaction in the in the fact that Jesus could Jesus is enough his eternal life gift is enough for us and we should not expect anything else anything more from him and we talked about this um, on Christmas Eve we talked about how what Jesus has come to do is to give us the fullness of life and we ought to find like we just ought to find satisfaction in that we shouldn't want more from him than what he's given us the way that Jesus has demonstrated his love for us is through his son Jesus and that ought to be enough we ought to find complete and total satisfaction in that and not want more things like how much more does God have to do to demonstrate his love for us than to give us his son and we ought to be satisfied with that we ought to find our comfort and our hope and our trust in that so today for me that's what I'm going to reflect on as I think about this this story um, I don't want to use my relationship with Jesus um, for for some sort of selfish gain I want to use my relationship with Jesus um, because it's a relationship and it's an opportunity to demonstrate love and sacrifice and kindness and mercy and these things that we talk about all the time at Westway Christian Church. It's, it's uh, my relationship with Jesus is an excuse for me to love others well and to demonstrate the same kinds of love, kindness, and mercy that God has shown um, to me. So let's pray about that. Um, God, thank you for your word this morning. Um, <clears throat> thank you for thank you for revealing to us that even even those who were closest to you um, still faced temptation and still gave in to sin. Um, they were not they were not supermen. Um, they were people who were who were still bound by um, by their fallenness and caught up in their brokenness. Um, and help us to see help us to see hints of that in our own lives. Help us to be like the woman we read about yesterday who is willing to sacrifice all things for you, for our relationship with you, and not just come to you. Um, wanting more and more and more from you and when you do not succeed help us to not give you up and it's in your son's name that we pray amen so <clears throat> a little later today we're going to do q a um, we're going to talk a little bit about what joe talked about on sunday about god's will for our lives um i did not bring my phone down with me but if you are um I would encourage you uh, to be doing that God's will study with us. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, when I get when I go uh, head back upstairs, I'll post a link in the show notes here um, or in the in the note for you to follow along that Bible study. I'm loving seeing people interact with that study. Um, it's really it's it's really encouraging to me um, to hop on in the morning and see people doing that. Um, so I'm going to post a, I'm going to post that link to that study, um, here, um, in a couple minutes. So I would love for you to do that. It's not too late. Um, so tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., we're going to talk about, um, the next section in Mark 14. I encourage you to read all of Mark 14. It's a long chapter. There are 70 plus verses in Mark 14. So we're going to be in this one, um, definitely throughout the rest of this week and probably through, um, probably through the rest of next week as well. So love you guys praying with you, praying for you. I will see you tomorrow, maybe later today. If not, we'll definitely see you tomorrow morning as we talk about the next section in Mark 14. So have a super day, and we'll talk to you again soon.